Thank you for your interest in Kapow software. In this video, I'll be demonstrating automating web content migration using Kapow Catalyst. This is a sample website that we'll be loading into Kapow's extraction browser. The extraction browser allows us to interact with and extract content from the website. We can extract visual components from the website, such as text or images, along with non-visual values such as metadata from the HTML or properties from the browser such as the URL. The content of interest is selected visually and mapped into a structured data object with attributes that you define. This, this is an overview of Kapow's content migration process. Content is extracted directly from the website with Kapow's robots and stored into an intermediate database. Here, the content can be formatted, categorized, and transformed to match the content model and taxonomy in the target CMS. The content can be uploaded as XML by way of REST web services, SOAP web services, Sling forms, or whatever custom API or standards-based API is provided by the CMS. Content can also be uploaded without using an API at all, simply by leveraging the user interface provided by the CMS's website. These are the steps to Kapow's content migration process. First, a database inventory of all the URLs that make up the site will be created. A robot will crawl the website and collect the URLs of all the HTML pages along with the URLs of all the resources such as images and other binary files. Next, we access each item in the inventory database table. The resource files are saved off and the HTML and other assets are parsed through to extract the content as structured data objects. We can then enrich and transform the content as needed for uploading it to the target CMS. Next, I'll be showing the Kapow Catalyst visual design environment. We'll see how robots that define our workflow are built. We'll look at a robot that does a page inventory, a robot for extracting content, and finally, a robot that uploads content to the target CMS. Central to the Kapow Catalyst design environment is the extraction browser, which we've loaded our sample website into with the first step of our robot here that you can see up above. I can create additional steps in the robot simply by interacting with the content in the extraction browser. For example, I'll recreate the next step in the robot, the for each URL step. I'll simply select this step, delete it from the robot, and then recreate that step by selecting the site, expanding the scope to the entire page, right-clicking on the page, selecting the type of step that I want to add. I want to add a loop for each URL, and as I click on this, the step is added back into the robot above. I can now click on the for each URL step and watch the robot step through the site URL by URL. The next step in the robot will actually extract the value that we have selected on the page. So for example, you can see currently we have this text selected and the HTML down below, you can see the href value is faasafety.gov forward slash some content. So this step, extract URL, which is configured here, is going to extract that text value and store it into the inventory.url attribute. So as I click past that step, in real time, we can verify that the URL value has been populated here. The next step in the inventory robot is the is in domain logical step. This step checks if the current URL is within the domain that we're doing an inventory of. And as you can see visually here, this content is from the faasafety.gov website. It does not belong to the aopao.com site. So when I try to pass this step, Kapow Catalyst is going to let me know that we can't reach the next step because we did not pass that logical test. So we'll go to the next element in the loop and that value is extracted into the URL attribute. The value is aopao.com forward slash some content, and that does contain aopao. So we pass that logical test and move on to the next three tests. The next three steps in the robot check if the current href that we have selected is one of these CMS generated buttons. If it is, we don't want to add the URL to our inventory. In this case, it's not, so we can pass by these tests and continue to the next step where we get the content type of the current URL which happens to be an HTML page so that content type is going to be set down here in our inventory object when I pass the step. Now we have the content type and the URL in our inventory object. 
We can now try to load the page and verify that it's a valid link. Now that we've verified that the link is valid, we verified that the URL belongs to the domain, it's not a CMS generated button, we can finally store it into our inventory database. Once we've run through this step by step for a single page and verified that the workflow and the robot works as we want it to, we can then switch to debug mode and run the robot and watch the content extracted from the pages, each URL and each content type, page by page, just as it would at runtime. This is the first of two extraction robots. This one's fairly simple. There's no visual component. We're simply going to query the inventory database that we just created and find all of the URLs for the resource files, such as the PDF files, JPEGs, etc. We're going to save all those files to the local hard drive and then store the location back in our database table. I'll switch to debug mode now and run the robot and here we can see each URL, each file name, and each file size as it's saved off to the local hard drive and the file location is stored back to our database. The second extraction robot goes back to the inventory database and this time we're going to query for all of the HTML content. After the page is loaded I'm going to select the main menu to determine the category of the content on this page. This is done with the find tag step. Here is where the find tag step is defined. We're going to look for active item within the tag. Here in the HTML below, you can see that the first item of the main menu is designated as the active item. When I click past this step, that menu item is found. When I click past that, we extract the text and store it as our category over here in our HTML content object. In the next step, we define an area within the page as an article. We're going to have a loop that goes through every article on the page and it finds the title of the article and that's mapped into our content object down here when I pass the step. And the next attribute is the subtitle that's mapped into the content object and then the article date. And as you notice the article date that was mapped into our object here is in a different format than you see here in the article. That's done with this converter. This is one of many converters provided in Kapow Catalyst. This particular converter does a pattern match on the date and converts it into the format that we want. There's also converters for other types of arithmetic functions and other text converters available. The next step extracts the author and then we extract the content of the article and now that we've fully populated our content object, we're ready to store that object into the database. So, so we've gone through the robot step by step for one article on one page. This is exactly how you design a robot. You load one page that you know has a similar layout to many other pages. You select the content on the page, define it, and map it into your object, and then create the business rules to transform the content and format it exactly how you want to see it and store it in your database. Now we're going to run this in debug mode and allow the robot to run through all of the articles on the first page. When it gets to the final article, it'll load the next page, load all the articles on the next page, and if we have any issues with the layout on other pages, the debugger will let us know. I'll hit play. It runs through to the 16th article and stops us at extract subtitle. Here, I simply hit the Go To button in the debugger. That brings us back to the Visual Design Studio where we can see that the 16th article doesn't have a subtitle. So this is the problem that we've hit and we can simply solve this by changing our robot now. We can add a branch to the robot where we handle this case in a different way or we can set a default value for the subtitle or we can simply handle it with error handling, say ignore and continue if it's not a required field. Now that we've made this quick change, we can go back to the debugger and run it again. This time we go past the 16th article and we're going through all the pages. We're on the 14th, 15th, and 16th page. It's this rapid iterative design process that, that allows you to continuously fine tune your robot until you can extract all the content from all the pages as you visually verify that the content is formatted and structured to match the content model in your target CMS. 
Now that we have all of our content stored in our database, we're ready to upload the content into Drupal. We load Drupal's page into our browser. We enter our username. The next step, we enter our password. The next step, we click the login button. And the next step, we click the add content button. As you can see, I'm displaying the Drupal page without using CSS style sheets. This reveals all of the links on the page so I can click down into any frame without anything being hidden. Now that I'm at the point where I'm ready to add an article into the Drupal CMS, I'm going to go to my database of articles. I'm going to query my database for all articles in my database. As I click past that step, the first article is going to be loaded into my data object to the bottom right. So I have my first article with all the attributes populated here. The category, title, there is no subtitle for this article, the date, author, and the body of the article. Now I can load the page for uploading the article and I can start to enter the attributes from my data object. I'm going to enter the title from my title attribute. So we have the title entered. Now I'm going to enter tags from the article. I have my tag set. Now I'm going to enter the content. And again, you can see the configuration for the current step is here. So where are we getting the content from? We're getting it from the object HTML content dot content, which you can see down here, HTML content. And here's the content attribute. It's the body of the article. So when I click past this step, we'll see this attribute populated into the selected field in the browser. So we can pan down now and see that we have our article fully populated in the form and we're ready to add any images that belong to that article. So we're going to query our resource database table, get the images that belong to that article and populate them into the field here. So now once we've added the name of the file that we want to upload, we can go ahead and hit the upload button. The next step clicks the upload. So now the image has been uploaded. Next we check mark provide a menu link. And we're going to set our menu link to be the category for this article. So here's our menu link. We're entering the category attribute from our data object. We can pan down and see that that's not populated. And so the last step is we've selected the save button and now we click the save button. So the first article has been saved into Drupal and the next step saves a new URL back into the database. The query database loop step will now go back to the database and get the next article. Each of the steps following the loop step will be repeated. We'll populate the form and then submit the article to be saved into Drupal and the new URL for the content will be saved into the database. The loop step will continue to do this until all the articles have been uploaded into Drupal. I can switch to debug mode now and we can run the robot and watch as it loads all of the articles into Drupal one by one. Here's the first article, category, title, the date, author, the body of the article, and the second article, third, the fourth, and so on. We can now switch over to Drupal and verify that the articles are being added. Again, this is a simple example of interacting with the Drupal CMS by uploading articles into the content repository. We can obviously do anything in Drupal that you can do through the user interface of the website, simply by clicking on the steps, looping through our databases, and recording those steps in a robot that you can rerun to get all of your content moved into Drupal in an automated process with no coding or scripting. Now let's take a look at the database. Here in our database, we can see that the new URL field is now fully populated so that we can go back to our HTML content, do a find and replace, and relink all of our content with the new correct links. Also in the database, we see these compile generated fields, first extracted, last extracted, extracted and last run, and last updated. These allow us to do our content migration with no content freeze. After the initial inventory and content migration run is completed, we run the inventory robot one final time. It will check the content on the live website 
and see if any content has been changed since it was last migrated. If so, the new content will be migrated into the CMS. If you have any questions, or you would like to see a more in-depth content migration demonstration, please use the information below to contact Content Migration Sales at Kapow Software.